them, the first film in history that declared its preferred pronoun. We kick off with a New Mexico State Police aircraft and some cops that are out on a search and rescue job. They find a kid wandering through the desert. Not sure who she is, she can't say. In the desert, you can't remember your name, because there ain't no one for to give you no pain. The lead cop, Peterson, finds her completely spaced out and unresponsive, and they bring her to a station wagon and trailer at the plane spotted nearby. The trailer has been ripped open and the inside is smashed. Oh my dear lord, we will never get the deposit back now. Well, even just a quick look around reveals both blood and cash that is just left sitting there. So it wasn't a robbery, or it wasn't an escaped felon either, yet this was definitely foul play. You know, it turns sounds really weird to actually saying it out loud. It just sounds so stereotypically English, doesn't it? I say, did that chap just murder that other chap there? I say, bad form, bad form! There's also a revolver on the scene that has been completely emptied, the missing part of the girl's doll, and cloth that says that she was probably hiding away from whatever happened. Found this. I picked up just one. There's six or seven more scouted over there. Sugar. Don't get fresh. Let's keep our relationship professional. There is a footprint, but it's hard to tell what it could possibly be. So much so they wonder if it might have just been something that was just laid there. But nevertheless, could be evidence. So they're going to have the evidence team come out and take pictures, a plaster cast. You know, everybody's out here in their Sunday best. Oh, and also... Yeah, there's that. That doesn't sound like the crickets I'm used to hearing. That's the first thing that gets a reaction out of the girl. She doesn't speak, but she is pulled out of her daze briefly by it, so we can file that away under important. They decide to check out the nearby general store to see if the owner knows anything. So they head over to that hole in the wall, only to find a hole in the wall. The place has been ransacked, the owner clearly having left in the middle of dinner. And then there's this. Ever seen anything like it? Only once. A murder case involving a hunter and a wascally wabbit. They find the owner, dead and bloody in the cellar. Aside of the fact that there's a body, this is the same. No robbery, sugar at the scene, wall pushed out from the inside, and the most noticeable problem of all, the lack of miracle grow plant food. Thank you, the three of you that got that. Well, Ed is going to stay here to wait for the team at the trailer to arrive while Peterson heads back to town to see if the little girl is talking yet. That means Peterson misses the return of the creepy-ass sound and the sight of whatever it is that's responsible for... <laughs> my foot! I can't believe I shot my foot! Vim operates on a slow burn, allowing mystery and suspense to hold the tension as the police confront one grim scene after the next. The store setting has now turned up the dial even more, bit by bit, until we see the corpse, and the culmination then with Ed being driven to fire repeatedly and die screaming off screen. Them is succeeding because it takes its subject matter seriously. People sometimes assume that this means they're not stopping and winking at the camera, but what it really means is that when you're making the movie, you're aspiring to make it more than just your paycheck. The movie should show the artistry that drove you to work in film. There are cases when you are polishing a turd, sure, but a significant criticism can be leveled at many filmmakers in speculative fiction that the bad movie wasn't born in the premise. It was that they took the money and ran. To see an example of how them wasn't doing that, look at the little girl in Peterson. He's the second to arrive at the trailer because at first, just Ed heads out there to handle it since the girl has fallen asleep leaning against Peterson. This is totally unnecessary for the story, but it builds for the viewer the image of Peterson as more than just a man in a uniform. He's a human being capable of compassion. He very carefully lays her down when he finally has to leave. This didn't need to be there, and they spent money shooting this, remember. But it's good that they did, because the film is the better for it. 
Indeed, the role of children in this world is important to the theme of the film. Note that later on we learn that there was a mother, father, and two children in that trailer. And it's not a mistake, because Peterson will later on say a number of victims that could only mean three died at this scene. This is a world where children are not safe. And in that world, Peterson's small moments of compassion shows that he's the person to address these problems. The next day, Peterson is still reeling from Ed's death. And despite everything they've done, all they know for sure is the name of the owner of the station wagon. Peterson's called out to the mental institutions is, so far, the only plausible explanation for all this is likely a homicidal maniac, which is my second least favorite kind of maniac, edging out baseball bat to the groin maniac. They are the worst. They learn the owner of the car was an FBI agent, so they get brought in to help out. So far, all the representative, Graham, is doing is complaining that New Mexico is hot. But at least we know his detective skills are sharp, don't we? Well, old man Johnson could have died in any one of five ways. But he picked this one. What an idiot. Sorry, but that setup is too rare for me not to milk it as much as I can. Well, old man Johnson could have died in any one of five ways. Six if he owns a donkey. Well, old man Johnson could have died in any one of five ways. Must have wandered into a boss fight. Okay, last one. Well, old man Johnson could have died in any one of five ways. Personally, I think the most likely one is... The most notable thing about the body, aside that this guy is extremely dead, is that it's got formic acid in it, enough to kill 20 men. It's why they say don't get high on your own supply, remember. This prompts Dr. Medford of the Department of Agriculture to come out from Washington and brings along his daughter, Dr. Medford. What a coincidence. He refers to her as Pat, so consequently I will as well. It's either that or I call him what she says, Father, which will just sound stupid. Dr. Father sounds like an 80s sitcom that got three episodes before it was canceled, doesn't it? He's quite a doctor, huh? Yeah. She's the kind that takes care of sick people. I think I get a fever real quick. Then she'd have to put a thermometer in my butt. They discuss things a little while, largely ignoring Peterson and Graham and pretty much anyone not saying what Dr. Medford wants to hear. They go see the little girl, where he can at least help out. My work here is done. The reason she responds to that is that it's formic acid, the same stuff found in the very, very, very dead man which convinces Dr. Medford they need to head to the desert immediately, you know, b- before they run out. Peterson gets the short straw and is stuck with Dr. Magoo stumbling about without his goggles on, while Graham complains to Pat about them not sharing what they're thinking. She insists they want to be sure first, and given the theory, you can imagine why. Plus, Dr. Medford is convinced that, if it's true, there will be a national panic if the public finds out. While they're poking around, Pat finds another footprint and hears the chirping sound, and then it's the money shot. (laughs) Let's get into this right away. Some throw shade on the ants in this movie. You know what? I'm actually not one of them. Even leaving aside the production problems that they had, I find them perfectly serviceable for a 1954 film. The problem they had was that this was supposed to be a big prestige picture. It was going to be a huge deal for them. By them, I mean the company. I am not going to do any wordplay with the title of the film when it's such a commonly used pronoun, okay? If I do, I'm going to make it really obvious to you. It was going to be a big deal for them, in color, with 3D, huge names attached. So what went wrong? What went wrong was Jack Warner, who didn't get science fiction or horror. If he didn't like it, he couldn't see how anyone else would. So the budget was slashed and slashed and then slashed some more until a rookie producer was finally hired. Well, this wound up hitting them from both directions. They could have been using Ray Harryhausen's brilliant work, but he was deemed too expensive. No, we'll do the effects ourselves. Okay, we could have done it with optical effects, like would be done with tremendous success the following year, 
in Universal's Tarantula, except optical effects can't be used with 3D. So we wound up with sort of a Goldilocks of shit. We didn't aim high enough for great effects, but we didn't aim low enough for optical effects. Now, like I said, I actually don't really mind. I'm just saying they kind of trapped themselves by doing it. 